big point of disappointment. I'm here in California. Prop 8 did pass. That was very disappointing to me. It seemed like a pretty uh, seemed like a pretty easy bill to uh, recognize for for its faults and its uh, lunacy. But um, but uh, I think the the proponents of uh, Prop 8 did a good job at uh, selling the lie. The selling the lie, and that uh, for those of you who aren't in California, the lie that uh, was that was pushed forth, and they had a lot of money from uh, the Mormon Church and from some uh, a couple other extremely wealthy heirs um, uh, the lie that they put forth those in, in the commercials was that they were constantly saying that that the law right now dictates that gay marriage is taught in school and that's completely false there's absolutely nothing about that that's true there's there's absolutely nothing about it that's true the, the, the what they use for their entire example is in Massachusetts shortly after they legalized gay marriage there was a single teacher one teacher that took her class to a gay wedding. It might have actually been her own gay wedding. I'm not sure. And that teacher described her reason for taking the children because she thought it was a teachable moment. Yes, that one single person. But guess what? Her school district disagreed. The administration disagreed. She was reprimanded. Everybody agreed. That would have it's not there's absolutely no reason one not even because it's gay marriage but because you're wasting valuable classroom time where they should be learning something important two yeah without asking parents to even go on a field day trip or something like that hey that's a lot of you know that's a lot of risks there that you're taking so really it was just bad policy altogether that has nothing to do with gay marriage though that has nothing to do with gays having the right to be married absolutely nothing and that's what the prop 8 proponents uh, pushed though was that with gay marriage being legal that it was being taught in schools and that you had no choice about it so <clears throat> they were able to convince um, I guess 52 percent of voters in California that's what they won from a uh, percentage was 52 to 48 so and um, what I've read as well is that 63% of African Americans here in California actually voted yes on Prop 8. And, you know, as a white guy, it's easy for me to sit there and go like, hey, that's fucked up, you know, what what the hell, you know, civil liberties and everything like that. And honestly, it kind of, I thought was messed up. But I just read an opinion piece in the LA Times written by this woman, and um, she brings up a good point that um, that gay marriage you know, honestly, is a pretty, well, again, I'm not gay, so I may be understated, understating this as well, but it, it seems like it's much lower on the level of civil liberties than, say, you know, African American rights and being able to vote and that kind of stuff. So, they don't feel that that's really equal yet, so as far as, I don't know, from what my take on this column was, is she was saying that because they don't feel like they've really been given civil rights either. They're like, why the hell should we... But I don't know, that's kind of messed up too. Like, we haven't gotten it, so why should we, you know, allow you guys to have civil liberties? I, I'm not sure. It seems very confusing. Really, I'm all about just people doing basically whatever the hell they want to, as long as it's not hurting other people. Now, of course, hurting other people is... may, may, be, termed a subjective, uh, may be termed a subjective type of opinion, because... Really, as far as I'm concerned, taking your children to church where they sit there and babble and tell them to be scared of God is hurting people. But that's my opinion. So I'm sure you don't share that with me or a lot of you don't share that with me. So, but, so, Obama wins, Prop 8 wins, which is a loss, really, for us. But, uh, let's see, Palin is still a celebrity. I think she'll be a celebrity for a while, but uh, if she runs for in 2012, or 012, as her supporters say, not realizing, of course, that, uh, yeah, that that's an incorrect number. But, 2012, I'm going to love it, because there's no possible way that somebody is dumb and is, and is religious, yeah, uh-huh, religious as her will ever win the presidential office in fact bush he's not fucking religious give me a break the man was doing coke drinking drunk driving all sorts of stuff when he was in the mil military i guess we'll call it the texas national guard okay so 
he's not any type of saint. He's not any type of saint. It, it, it's not hard to have a wild and crazy life, and then later on when you get older and you have kids and everything like that, for you to suddenly become born again. That doesn't really, you know, what the hell is that? You've already gotten done with all your, look, I'm only in my 30s, and I'm already getting tired. I don't, I don't want to go to parties. It's too much energy. So what the hell? We're rewarding Bush for, you know, for growing up? Get the fuck out of here. So either way, Palin, eh, we probably won't be talking about you a week or two from now. We'll see. A uh, $2 trillion bailout. Rush Limbaugh's pissed. And I think that's about it. So uh, thanks a lot, and uh, I hope everybody has a good godless day.